Hi, it's Jason Gorman from Codemanship with the um, the fifth video in our series on uh, test driven development in Python. If you've not seen the first four videos, I highly recommend that you check those out first before watching this video. It'll make a lot more sense. Um, so this video is going to be all about the difference between two different approaches to test driven development. One which is called inside out development and one which is usually referred to as outside in test driven development. And we're going to be talking about the, the differences between the approaches and the, the, the advantages and disadvantages of both approaches, starting with talking about inside out test driven development. So inside-out test driven development um, refers to test driving the parts of our design, if you like, the pieces of a jigsaw, and then putting those pieces together to make the jigsaw um, as the last step. So I'm going to be using the Mars rover um, exercise again to illustrate this. We're going to be doing some inside-out test driven development. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be writing tests for internal parts of our design for our Mars rover. Um, and then I'm going to be wiring those parts together at the end to pass um, an overall high level test. So um, if you are not familiar with the Mars Rover Cata, there's going to be a link in the description below. Um, it's just an exercise where we write some code to essentially steer um, and drive a, 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 an idealized rover on the surface of Mars, um, which is placed on a grid of squares. And we can place it facing in any particular direction, north, east, south and west and a particular um, grid point, so um, a particular X, Y point. And we can move it forwards and backwards and um, on the grid. And I might sit down and have a little think about the design in my head. And I might decide that oh, I'm going to need a method for turning the rover to the right. Um, so if it's facing north, it'll turn right to facing east. So if we're doing it inside out, what we'll do is we'll, we'll test drive that method, plus all the, the other methods that we think we need for our Mars rover. And then as the last step, we'll put something together at a higher level that will actually accept instructions and execute those instructions invoking the right method, whether it's right or left or forward or back. Okay, so let's write a test for turning right from north to east. Oh, must begin with test underscore. I'm using the built-in unit testing framework that comes with Python. Test turn right north to east. Okay, I'm going to write the test assertion first. And work backwards. So it should end up facing east. There's our rover. And let's declare that rover. Not a river, a rover, and we're going to say that it's going to start by facing north. Okay, so we're going to need a rover class, and I'm going to, for convenience sake, I'm going to create it as a data class. If you're not familiar with data classes, don't worry. It's just a new thing that's uh, a relatively new thing that's built into the Python language that allows us to create classes that hold data very easily. So we can declare this as a data class. And I'm going to make it um, immutable. Now, there is really no such thing as immutable data in um, Python. But if we declare our data class as frozen, then if we try to change the values of any of its fields, then the runtime will throw an error. Um, OK, so we're going to need a field for what direction it's facing in. And we can make that a string. OK, so that's our rover. And what it will do at runtime is it will generate that constructor. So we're actually initializing the, this facing um, field with north. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell the rover to go right. So that's the method that we're testing, this right method. Let's declare that there. OK. And we're going to need to um, return something so that we can run this test and see it fail. So let's run that test. 
And the test should fail because we're not actually turning it at all. We're not changing the direction it's facing in. There we go. We're expecting it to be east, but it's actually north still. And then we do the simplest thing to pass this test. So let's return a copy of this object. So the replace function will create a copy of this immutable object. And we're going to mutate one of its fields. Like so. Easy peasy. So it should end up facing east. And there we go. So we're test driving these individual methods. We're test driving a method for turning right. Let's just do uh, one more test. So let's go from east to south. Again, I'll work backwards from the assertion. So it should end up facing south if it started facing east. Now we have our rover, so there's nothing to declare there. And now let's tell it to turn right again from east to south. So if we run this test, this will fail because it actually ends facing east still. There we go. And simple way to pass this test, we can just say, OK, if you're already facing north, then tell it to face east. Otherwise, return a copy of the rover that is facing south, and so on and so forth. So we can continue working through these, test driving a method for turning right, test driving a method for turning left, test driving a method for going forward one square, test driving a method for going backwards one square, and um, so on and so forth. So we're essentially test driving pieces of a jigsaw here. And then what we're going to do is at the end, when we've got all the pieces, is we're going to put them together into one high level hole, as you were. We're going to put the jigsaw together. Um, now, you're probably going to get bored watching me do that. So we're going to pause the video at this point and then we'll rejoin it um, when I've actually got all of my individual pieces. So you're rejoining me now um, at a point where I have I've basically test driven an internal design. You'll see there's a bunch of methods here for turning right, turning left, for going forward and back, and also for looking up individual commands, which we're going to use to map a sequence of instructions onto those methods for right and left and forward and back. Um, so we have all the pieces of the jigsaw. And the last sort of thing we need to do to finish off is to put them all together into something that will take a sequence of instructions and execute the right command one after the other. Um, so we're going to finish off by writing, let's just write one test here, just to make things a little quicker. Um, so let's test that it executes a sequence of instructions. OK, working backwards from the assertion. So let's say, for example, we're going to start with a rover that's facing north and is at grid position 5.5. Five. And if we give it all we need is two instructions, really, to check that it's executing a sequence. Um, so if we say, look, you know, turn right and then go forward, it should end up facing east and it should move one square to the east. So plus one in the x direction. So let's first of all just check what direction it should be facing in at the end. We're saying it should end facing east and we're going to need a okay so we're going to put it at a position of five and five and we're saying that it starts by facing north. Okay and we're also saying 
that it should end at the position 5, 6. So plus 1 in the, uh, sorry, 5, 6, 6, 5. So plus 1 in the x direction, plus 1 in the east direction. Should be its new position. And that will be as a result telling it to go to the right and then move forward one square. So RF. So we've already mapped on our different commands. So now we're just checking that we can actually find the right command um, in a sequence of instructions and execute it. OK. Um, now, if I run this, obviously it won't work because we don't have a go method. Let's add that. And in order to see this fail, those are our instructions. And in order to see this fail, we're going to return an object, in this case, an unmutated Mars rover, just so we can see this test fail. Let's check why it's failing. OK, yeah, so it hasn't turned and it hasn't moved. Right. Um, so let's make it do that. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of a leap here just to save time. We can actually use a reduce function. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be accumulating copies of the rover, overwriting each copy of the rover each time a command is executed for an individual instruction. Um, so um, over get command uh, for that instruction. And then we're just going to call that command. OK, and there's our list of instructions. Basically, if you're not familiar with the way that, that, that Python treats strings, they can be treated as character arrays. Um, and we're going to pass in this instance as the starting instance. So we can do that using a reduce. And hopefully when I run this, it will find all of the commands and it will execute them. OK, so this is kind of the entry point to our Mars rover. We, we tell it to go with a sequence of instructions. We should end up with a rover that is in, in the right position, facing in the right direction after executing all of those instructions. So this is the, the highest level part of the design, if you like. This is the entry point to our Mars rover. So we're kind of done now of this part of the requirements. Um, and one of the advantages of this approach where we test drive the individual pieces of the jigsaw if you like is if we look at our tests they're very specific so they're pinpointing if this test fails then it's that method that's gone wrong if this test fails then it's that method that's gone wrong so they are useful for pinpointing when tests fail exactly exactly where it's gone wrong uh, but this approach does have drawbacks as well um, one of the drawbacks, one of the major drawbacks, is that um, we can test drive all of the individual pieces, but there's a danger that when we try to put the jigsaw together, we've got the wrong pieces, all the pieces don't fit. Um, so there is a risk there. We, if, we, if we start on the inside with individual parts of the, of the puzzle, that when we try to put them all together, we end up not solving the puzzle, if you like. Um, and we'll look in the next video, the second part of this video, at a way of avoiding that by working from the outside in. Um, and the other drawback of this inside out approach, which we can hopefully see by just looking at the test code, is um, our, well, let's make it more explicit by, I still haven't done this, so let's do this. Let's move our Mars rover into its own file in the root folder. Not a Mars rover, a Mars rover. And once we've done that, hopefully it'll become a bit more explicit. Now, oops. When we take a look inside our test code, you will see that it knows a lot about the internal design of the rover. It knows what method to call to move it to the right. It knows what method to call to move it to the left. What method to call to move it forward? What method to call to move it back? So it's binding to all of these internal details of the design, which means if we want to change the internal design of our rover for any reason, um, we're going to have to rewrite a lot of test code. So one of the other drawbacks of um, working from the, um, the inside out 
is that we end up with test code that is very tightly coupled to the internal design. It knows too much about the internal design. Um, so one advantage is it's great for pinpointing problems, which means when you work in this kind of way, you don't spend a lot of time in the debugger um, because your test is sort of pointing to where exactly the problem is. But the two drawbacks are is, first of all, you might end up with the wrong pieces for your jigsaw. Um, uh, if you make the pieces first and then try to put them together in, a dig in, in the final jigsaw. And the other big drawback is that you end up with test code that knows a lot about the internal design. It is a constraint on the internal design. In other words, it's going to make it harder to refactor this internal design to, uh, to make it do other things or to make it uh, improve it in any way. So that's inside out test driven development. It has, has a plus, but it has a couple of minuses. Um, what we're going to be doing in the second part of this video is tackling the exact same problem, but we're going to be doing it from the outside in. And again, you will see that that has advantages and disadvantages. So I will see you in the next part of this video.